Hello there, I am Minefiend. This is the MMO, The Secret World, and this is Little Boo. Uh, we're just at the Raven's Knock, as you can see here. We're about to meet um, one of my favourite characters in the game. So let's go inside and say hello. I knew you would come. Here she is in the corner, Madame Roger. I sense, I sense an alien presence. The fog obscures a terrible truth concealed behind a veil of, sorry, old habits. <laughs> hey, just so you know, I don't do readings anymore. I've been outside. You don't need second sight to foretell our future. We're all doomed. It's not like I'm gonna need the money. It's strange, but it's the dreams that really get to me, not reality. I can handle reality, but those nightmares just... It's like a really annoying song that gets stuck in your head repeating over and over and over again. The dreams are always about ravens. Thousands of ravens. Flapping wings. Black feathers. Dead eyes. Beaks and talons tearing and clawing and screeching. Wings of death and pestilence. A black, timeless malice covering Kingsmith like a funeral shroud. You get the idea. I don't know what any of it means, but it's doing a number on my beauty sleep, I can tell you that. No. We'll get to speak to Madame Roger in a minute and learn quite a lot about her character and how, how wonderful she really is. Uh, but I want to speak for a moment about ravens. Ravens are um, quite the mythological bird. They, they've got a lot to do. And they're in almost every mythology. Uh, in some, like Greek mythology, they're actually a lucky sign. Um, a sign of prophecy. Uh, because they were associated as the sort of like as the messengers and the servants of the god Apollo who was also the god of prophecy uh, so they considered quite lucky but they're in many many mythologies most of them they have sort of like <clears throat> uh, not particularly evil but certainly a foreboding um, uh, character they're, um, because, you see, ra ravens, you know, they've got the black plumage, as she says, the dead eyes. Uh, they're actually carrion eaters, so they, they, they eat dead carcasses. So they're seen as like a conduit, in a way, between the world of the living and the dead. Um, <clears throat> and for instance, like, in Swedish mythology, in Sweden, they're seen as um, the ghosts of murdered people. Um, which is quite a sinister thing to think of. Um, and then in other mythologies, um, Indian mythology, uh, Aboriginal mythology, um, they're actually thought to have originally been white, uh, which will be shown sort of slightly here in a few later missions, I will mention it when we get to that mission, uh, which I do, I love that about this game, this game has, is so deep and rich, you'll play through this most of the time, <coughs> I'm quite sure players would play through this mission and not realise the depth of the ravens, the the way they are associated with prophecy. And this woman here makes her living as a fortune teller, or did do, doing the fake fortunes, until all this happened when suddenly she starts to have real visions. Um, it's very cleverly done, and I think the majority of players will just skim through it and not see it. Really won't see it. It's a case of stopping and in thinking about everything along the way and you'll get this really rich thing. The developers have put so much work into this. Really, really put a lot of thought into it. <coughs> um, we'll just look at the mission here first of all before it says, it says Madame Roger has been having dark visions uh, involving ravens. Locate the source of her visions. Beaks and talons tearing and clawing and screeching. Wings of death and pestilence. A black, timeless malice covering Kingsmouth like a funeral shroud. What a wonderful, poetic way of um, describing them. 
uh, and poet poetic is quite apt really because one of the influences on this is Edgar Allan Poe who does a Poe Cove and uh, he has a very famous poem called The Raven in which a student um, a scholar is locked in um, his room and he hears a tap tap tapping um, that he think comes from the door and it doesn't it turns out it's from the window and he opens the window and this raven hops in and sits on this bust of powers and uh, he sort of like has this discourse with the raven um, exp talking all about his dead love the beautiful Lenore and the raven never ne never really talks back it'll just screech the word never more at him which is quite um, telling in that he will never more see the beauty of his lost love and and he, he goes gradually insane talking to this raven and it, it's, it's just quite an, uh, an intelligent poem um, but, but I could talk about this for ages. Let's, let's talk to Madame Roger first of all and go through some of her wonderful lines of dialogue. She really is <laughs> a really great character. <coughs> Alright, so, um, Madame Roger, can you tell me something about yourself? You might have heard some rumours about me. It's not true. Not all of it. I mean, sure, before all this happened, I was, um, I was an active young woman. You know, I like to play, but that doesn't give anybody the right to badmouth me. <sighs> small towns are all the same, filled with small-minded and petty people. So, by active woman, who, young woman who liked to play, obviously, she's basically what I suppose this small town would consider the local slut. <laughs> um, and it, she sort of, like, <clears throat> accepts her role. Can you tell me anything more about yourself? So, if a married man breaks his vows, I'm to blame, right? Yeah, stands to reason he was bewitched and seduced through no fault of his own. Drum up the auto de fe, burn the witch at the stake! Uh, that's quite true too, I mean, I'm, I'm a firm believer in that, you know, cheating takes two. You can't just blame the other person. If there's one person in the relationship and they break the commitment, they break the vows, it's them to blame. The other woman shouldn't be doing it maybe if she knows but or the man but if it's a it's the person that's in the relationship that's at fault or quite often it's the scarlet woman or whatever that gets the blame the womanizer <coughs> i find it amusing when they talk about me behind my back more often than not my most vocal detractors have been among my most frequent visitors jealousy and guilt are two very powerful incentives to exaggerating someone's promiscuity so she gets frequent visitors from the men of the town, even the men of the town who were uh, decrying her to the rest of the populace. Which, um, again, it's quite sad and it's uh, also quite a common thing, I suppose, in a way. Right, can you tell me anything about this mysterious fog? I suppose I got lucky when the fog came. I was um, tied up in here. <laughs> I had this uncontrollable urge to walk into the sea, let the waters swallow me. But I was unable to, due to, you know, the plush handcuffs. <laughs> so she was actually saved by her um, promiscuity, plush handcuffs. But I love that, that she says she felt this uncontrollable urge to walk into the sea like the rest of the town did walk into the sea and drown herself, which is a wonderful um, aspect of horror. The fact that they all felt this compulsion to just walk into the sea and drown themselves just ooh, gives you shivers and uh, then they come back as zombies. Uh, what else can you tell me about the fog? The mayor wasn't as fortunate, but I suppose I can thank his fetishes for saving my life. And the commotion he ran out of here in his boxers with the key to the handcuffs which probably means he's walking around out there somewhere in his boxers with the key to the handcuffs so you see her customer at the time let's call it customers because that's exactly what they are um wanted to handcuff her the mayor himself um which is what saved her life so um at least <laughs> she's still here 
I like Mod Madame Roger. She she really makes, look, she accepts who she is and what she is. I contemplated biting off my own hands, but then Andy found me, buck naked. Me, not him. <laughs> he turned red as a tomato, sweet kid. <laughs> but I didn't want to join the others at the station. I've had enough of that judgmental looks and the whispering. I'll fend for myself, thanks very much. So Andy rescued her. Otherwise she'd still be handcuffed to the bed. Can you tell me anything about Kingsmouth Town? I'm not from Kingsmouth. I moved here about ten years ago. In retrospect, perhaps not the best decision I've ever made. First my husband left me. Then I lost my house, my savings. Running away seemed like the best answer at the time. I moved around for a few years. I didn't have any applicable skills. No education. My options were limited. Hello, Kingsmouth. Yeah. So she's been here for ten years, but is still an outsider. Poor thing. This town seemed as good a place as any to settle. Plenty of people in need of assurance, so I figured I'd give this fortune-telling business a go. And here I am. Surrounded by the living dead. In more ways than one. Can you tell me anything about the Halloween that seems perpetual here? Some nights exist out of time. They're not part of one season or the next. They don't belong to the living or the dead. Boundaries collapse. Mortals meet with gods, demons, ghosts, all that crap. Sacrifice, purging, divination, summoning. There are certain kinds of crazy you can't get away with on normal nights. Example, apparently it's the one night of the year mortals can um, make love with supernatural creatures. I know, fingers crossed, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, if you know any single fawns, obviously I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, they don't have to be single. <laughs> Uh, she's a great character. Just, just wonderful. Um, I like coming here to speak to Madame Roger. Right, so she's had this terrible vision of the ravens. So we're going to go and find for ravens. Now, as I say, ravens are important to um, <clears throat> many, many mythologies. Do even in Greek mythology, for instance, um, Odin himself, to you know, the the Greek god Odin, he actually had two pet ravens uh, that he used to send out every day to fly to the realm of Midgard, bringing back news. So uh, they were called Hugin and Mugin, or Huggin and Muggin. Not quite sure how you'd pronounce that. Um, <coughs> so they're they're very very important, and actually. Um, I'm English and they have quite a part to do within English history as well. Let me stand here for a moment and uh, tell you uh, because um, the part of English history, uh, the Royal Ast Astronomer, um, John Flamsteed, he complained about the ravens at his observatory which was located at the Tower of London um, to the King Charles II at the time. And the King was going to have the ravens removed until he was told that there's a very a a very long superstition that if ever the ravens leave the Tower of London in England, um, then the Kingdom of Ingdom, England will fall. And so <laughs> he probably changed his mind and had John Flamsteed and the observatory moved. And he had it moved to Greenwich, which is where the Royal Observatory is now. And hence you have Greenwich Mean Time and all that sort of thing. And that's all down to the fact that they didn't want to move ravens. Now here, <coughs> this quest some people struggle with this because they don't quite realize what they've got to do we've got to search for ravens well there's a raven straight away in front of us um, so let's head to the raven and it begins to fly away so we'll follow it and if you follow it in roughly the line it where it's gone you'll see there's now two ravens there um, I don't know whether or not yeah doesn't keep coming up with it so we'll just follow it along And the two ravens now head off in that direction. Just keep following the ravens. So we'll just follow the ravens. Let me get my um, weapons sorted. Three, four and five. 
and they flew off in this direction here and there's three ravens now sitting on the ground now that you just saw was a revenant and that is actually um, <coughs> one of the monsters from the original trailers for the secret world you actually see it jump up and attack um, the Templar Rose White quite a fearsome thing the Revenant but we managed to um, hold it off the Ravens led to a Revenant it escaped leaving nothing but a single feather follow the Reven Revenant so look for the Ravens Okay. So let's head up. Oh, look, there's the four ravens now. So we'll follow these. And they're heading off in that direction. <coughs> so we'll keep we'll keep tracking them. And there's five ravens, which is the next one. They head down that way. Here we go. Six ravens. Again, we've managed to hold off the revenant, so we'll collect its feather. The revenant escaped again, leaving another fellow at uh, feather. Follow the revenant. Okay. I will always try to put these, this cursor down here because it annoys me when it's up here. But sometimes you get um, <coughs> caught up in the moment, and uh, and I forget. So I do apologise for that if it happens. So let's search this area for more ravens. And there they are. deal with this feral zombie. Those rippers, um, they're quite nasty things and they will summon in other zombies to help them. Okay, so let's follow all the ravens again. Taking us back into Kingsmouth, back towards where the um, towards where the uh, we we passed uh, the end of Angel Lane and the play park uh, <coughs> the the park is the children's park and um, the Brewster house there straight ahead of us and the fire station's just behind it the revenant disappeared again leaving a third feather follow the revenant and look for a way to stop it okay Well, there's the ravens again. Now this quest here, it's sort of like a little boss battle, and um, why am I getting that jump bouncing around again? Uh, quite often, you will get other players um, joining in, usually because they think they're helping you. Um, sometimes the odd one or two, of course, who's trying to just get experience but it's not quite how it works in the secret world um, so sometimes you can do this yourself other times players will rush in is he doing this quest or has he done it 
Ah, he's done it. So here we are, look, all the ravens are gathered here. <coughs> so we've now got to try and find a way to stop the revenant. Okay. Examine the mysterious note. Bind the malevolent spirits by placing the reagents at the points of the star. So we can actually trap the revenant here rather than let it keep, um, I suppose, teleporting away. We have to put them on the east, north, east, south, and then the north, south, and northwest. So not the west, but the north, east, south. Northwest and southwest marks. Okay. So let's see. South, yes, we've got to put one on the south. Southeast, no. East, yes. Northeast, no. North, yes. Then we want. There we go. Summon the Revenant. Got ya! <laughs> now, all the fights in the secret world are now are a lot easier than they used to be. Now, I, I don't quite know whether that's because I've learned <coughs> to do the right thing, like straight away hit with your big uh, attack with five, then hit whichever's more important, whichever's more um, practical, either the group attack or the single attack, until you get five of these, then hit with the magic when it's at full blast, and also use protection. I think it's a combination of both. The enhanced player experience has made it easier for you to complete these missions. Um, Let's just move out of the way in case anybody else comes along and wants to do this. Um, the enhanced player exhibition has made it easier to, to, to fight the monsters, to solo your way through. And um, also it's a case of I've learnt more about it, so I, do, I can do it easier than I could at first. Let's, let's send the report first of all to Richard Sonic, and he says... It is not the wind, I'm afraid. The Revenant is an old enemy of ours, a creature that smells death and foretells future misery. We have received similar reports to this in the past. One well, Ms. Rose White had an encounter much like yours. Now, that's the one I mentioned when, in the video. How this creature is tied to the park in Kingsmouth is another thing entirely, and something we should look into in the future. If there is a way to use this information to our benefit, we will certainly find it. Ah, Sonak. And we've got um, two sequences of Solomon Island, 3,330 packs of Romana money, and we've been given a new um, head talisman, which will increase our critical rating by five. So let's collect those. Let's have a look at what this is. Achievements. You have gained a new achievement. Commissioned. Um, complete ten missions. So we've completed ten missions now. Um, so let's have a look at my character sheet, which is there. So we've got Ashes as a head talisman. Let's bring up the inventory. <coughs> um, Revenant Ashes and the other Ashes. The other Ashes we don't want. The Revenant Ashes will actually... <coughs> it does the same. It gives us plus 83 health and a plus 59 attack rating, but it also gives us a plus 5 critical. So it's better. So let's right-click that and put that on instead. And now we were in the, the Revenant Ashes. And our crit rating um, has gone up to 5 now. <coughs> critical rating influences your critical chance. Increasing this stat will increase the chance of critical hits on your opponent. Um, so we're getting better. Each time we're getting stronger and stronger now. Um, I decided I didn't want those dice, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did I? Yeah. 48 health, 34 attack rating, 5 hit rating. I wanted, I decided to keep it because of the heal rating at the moment, yes. <coughs> Excuse me. 
At a later date we will do some inventory management and sort that out. Right. Um, so we've now got one skill point and four ability points. So we'll just we'll just look. Um, one skill point isn't going to do anything for me at the moment because um, I obviously need two skill points for the next one, so that's no good to me. But the four ability points, um, I could choose to get Haymaker. Consumes all hammer resources, a single target strike that um, deals 136 to 269 damage, um, physical damage, or uh, up to 309 physical damage if the target is impaired. We're not really implying a paired, we're implying uh, weakened uh, with this. Uh, is it um, that one? Uh, no, this one. <coughs> this allows us to apply weakened, so we're not really implying impaired at the moment, we're, we're making the creature weakened. So that, <coughs> while it's a good thing, isn't as good for us as, say, uh, getting stone cold would be at this point which would reduce the storm world effect by 15 seconds. So I'm going to buy this. Um, okay, now I have to look which one can I remove to, to put it on now. Um, whenever you hit with smash, the target also becomes weakened. Well, that's good. We want to apply weakened. We'll be applying weakened with that. We're applying weakened with this. Entropy. Whenever you critically hit, or penetrate with hand of change it builds one additional chaos resource that um, I think will be the one I'll remove righteous fury gives us a plus 15 percent critical on um, our big hitter hell to pay brawler gives us an increased 15 percent critical street fighter uh, whenever you apply impaired you gain a beneficial effect that increases all damage by 10 percent for eight seconds well we're not applying impaired either so both of those can be removed um, in the build we've got at the moment Gnosis whenever you hit a weakened target there's a 33 percent chance of performing extra damage that's good and that's good so we can either remove this Street Fighter or we can remove Entropy I think to begin with I'll remove Street, street Fighter because I'm not applying impaired I'm applying weak, weakened so let's take that out and put stone cold in so now this will recharge in 30 seconds instead of 45 seconds see it's down to 30 I think if I take that off you can see that it, that it says it's an instant attack but it takes 45 seconds to recharge but when I put this back down here now it only takes 30 seconds <coughs> right okay so that's um, the mission the raven um, i'll say thank you very much for watching uh, i hope you enjoyed this i hope you found it informative i <laughs> i just love the depth of this game and very few people seem to to study it in its depth but, you know these are harbingers of prophecy not necessarily evil prophecy sometimes it's good prophecy sometimes it's bad but i think here we can assume it's bad <laughs> i've been mind fiend you guys as always have been wonderful bye for now